It's important to note the context of this conversation that takes place with James and John and, and their mother and Jesus. They are on their way up to Jerusalem. That's what we hear. And Jesus is gently but honestly trying to prepare his followers for what will take place. Going up to Jerusalem is a, a softer way of saying we're going to die on the hill of Calvary because that's what awaits Jesus. Suffering, passion, the scourging, and finally the crucifixion, the very central focus of these holy days of Lent, the, the passion of Jesus. The one, as he reminds us at the end of the gospel today, who came not to be served, but to serve and to offer his life completely out of great love for the ransom of many, that sins would be forgiven, our sins, and the disobedience of, of the first Adam would be perfected by the obedience of Jesus himself. And we know for those disciples it was very difficult to comprehend, to understand really what would lie ahead we heard this past Sunday of Jesus taking them up on the mountain and transfiguring himself through God's power so that they would come to know in their hearts what would lie ahead. The glory of God for all who believe and hold fast to life in Jesus, no matter what the cost, how difficult the road might be. It's the same reminder for us. Those who are faithful in this life will be given the glory and salvation in the kingdom of God. It's interesting that in the Gospel of Matthew, it's the mother who asked the question. In the other Gospel, James and John ask themselves. They're arguing on the way. Who will be the greatest? And we know that a mother wants only everything best for their children. It's an innocent question, an honest one. She realizes what they've given up their entire lives to be at the service of Jesus. She wants some reward, some happiness and blessing for them who have given up everything. And Jesus very kindly responds, you really don't know what you're asking for. Can you drink of the chalice that I will drink? Can we be faithful in the passions of our life, the suffering, the disappointments, the rejection, the ridicule, the suffering that comes to all who hold fast to faith in Jesus Christ? That will come. Jesus never promised an easy road. Anyone who wants to come after me can expect the cross. He says it time and time again, and it's something we, we often don't like to hear. Our first reading speaks of the prophet Jeremiah, one of the chosen ones of God, the great prophet, who didn't want to be a prophet. I'm too young. Send someone else, Jeremiah says, but God promises to be with him. But Jeremiah finds the going quite difficult. People are trying to kill him, to keep him quiet, they torture him. They physically abuse him. He's thrown out of town after town. He gets dejected. He prays for death over and over again. But the Lord reminds him to be faithful to that call. It's his word that he has been called to preach, and God will deliver on his promises. We're called to faithfulness. You know, today we honor a great saint who is very perfect, really, for Lent, St. John of God. He didn't really turn his life around until almost the age of 40. He was not unlike St. Augustine. He came from a wealthy family. He lived a dissolute life. He was a great soldier. 
He hung on to power and success in life. Only at the age of 40 did he begin to have some remorse for the manner of his living. And he began to turn his life around. It's really, for us, a consolation and hope. It's never too late. Conversion is always possible. It's why we have hope in even the greatest sinner. God can always turn a person's life around through grace. There's always hope until we take our last breath. Everyone has an opportunity to become holy. We should never give up on anyone, but pray, even for those who have gone astray, those who are lost, even the greatest sinner among us, always lives in the hope of the grace of conversion. But St. John of God, through the preaching of, of St. John of the Cross, began to realize that he, he couldn't live beating up himself. Nothing could change his past, but he did have control about the present. And he began to live his life in service, just as the gospel calls us to do. In service to the poor, the needy, the sick, he gathered people around him, to take care of those who were rejected on the fringes of society. After his death, they even formed a community, the Brothers of St. John of God, who continue to this day to take care of the most destitute people in the world in the name of Jesus Christ. It's our call, that same call, not to be great. If we want to be great, we need to be least. If we want to find our way to the kingdom, we need to be the servant of God's people. That's the call of faith. And we pray, my brothers and sisters, that this Lent, through our prayer, our fasting, our works of mercy, we might become more devoted, more faithful, more courageous in offering our lives just as Jesus did on the cross, in great love, in kindness, in, patient, in patience and compassion to offer our lives for the good of others, to lay down our lives out of love so that through that blessing we can be granted what James and John and, the mo and their mother want so desperately, to be with Jesus forever in his kingdom.